Yo, you've likely seen the Flipper Zero all over the internet. And whether you've just unboxed yours or are simply curious about what it takes to get started, this guide is for you. It's normal to get this powerful gadget, see the little cyber dolphin staring back and think, okay, now what? That initial mix of excitement and intimidation is exactly why we're here. This guide will walk you through everything from the first power on to creating your own universal remotes in minutes. No confusing jargon, just the essentials to get you exploring what this awesome little tool can really do. But first, let's get this super important disclaimer out of the way. This device is built for education and experimentation only tested on your own devices or with clear written permission. Seriously, don't be the person who gives cool tech a bad name. Be responsible, be ethical, and have fun learning. All right, first things first. Before you can even think about powering it on, you need a micro SD card. Now, while the flipper technically boots up without one, you can't save anything, install apps, or update the firmware. So let's be honest, it's really not optional. Now you don't need anything huge, a good quality 16 gig is perfect, but make sure you get it from a trusted brand as it prevents issues like slow performance or data corruption, which can be a real headache. You want your flipper to be reliable from the start. So with the contacts facing up, slide the micro SD card into the slot on the bottom until you hear a small click. Next, use the included USB-C cable or a good quality USB-C cable and give it a full charge. The LED will show you the charging status, red for charging and green for finished. So just wait for it to signal it's full. A complete first charge helps condition the battery for a long life. Now that it's alive, we need to update the firmware. It's always best to start with the latest official firmware to get a feel for how everything works before diving into custom options. Now, although you can use the official Flipper mobile app, the easiest method is using the Q Flipper application on your computer. Just go to the official Flipper Zero website and download QFlipper for your operating system and install it. Then plug your Flipper into your computer and the app will detect it automatically. Find the install button and then click it. Then as soon as you click update, QFlipper will flash the latest version to your Flipper. It'll take a few minutes, your Flipper will restart and it will be fresh and ready to go. Do not skip this as this initial update ensures you have all the latest security patches and bug fixes, providing a stable foundation before you even start. Okay, with your flipper updated, you can now expand its capabilities by installing community developed apps. The official and safest way to do this is through the flipper app catalog. Now, the easiest method is to connect your flipper to your computer using a USB-C cable that supports data. Then open a web browser like Chrome and type in lab.flipper.net. Now, this web-based installer is fantastic because it works directly in your browser, meaning you don't have to download any extra programs to manage your apps. As you saw, on the left sidebar, you'll see an apps section. Clicking this takes you to a full catalog of applications you can install directly from your browser. Just find one you like and then hit install. The app will transfer over in seconds and appear right in your Flipper's app menu. Now, the awesome thing is you'll find a huge variety of apps sorted into categories. There are specialized tools for professionals that extend GPIO, NFC, and sub gigahertz, alongside practical utilities like password generators and barcode scanners. For fun, you can find a ton of games from classicals like Tetris and Snake to 
music making apps that turn your flipper into a portable instrument. The community is constantly adding new things, so this catalog is always growing and evolving. Feel free to browse through the different categories. Even just looking gives you a great idea of the flipper's versatility. All right, time for the moment you've likely been waiting for. Let's turn your flipper into a universal remote by learning the signals from your existing TV remote. This uses the infrared functionality, which is the same technology most home entertainment devices use to communicate. From your home screen, click the center button and then scroll down and click infrared. Then you'll see this menu appear. We want to scroll down and click learn new remote. Now you'll see a screen prompting you to point a remote at the flippers IR port, which is the dark window on the top left edge. So grab your TV remote, aim it at that port and press a button like the power button. You'll see the flipper screen react and display the name of the signal it just captured. Success, you just learned your first button. The flipper will prompt you to save it. Press the right button to save, and then you can give it a special name like power, W-E-R, and then go and click save. Now, if you scroll down and click plus, we can continue adding more buttons. So aim your remote again and press the volume up, click right again, and then save this as up. U, P, save. And now do the same for volume down, volume down, click right to save, and then call this down. D, O, W, N, and then click save. So you see the process is really simple. You're building a virtual remote one button at a time. To use your new remote, just scroll up and click on the button and the flipper will send the signal. If we hit back, then scroll down and click save remote, you'll see the remote you just saved in the list. Click it and just like before, you can click the options to send the signal you need. If we scroll down and click edit, we can add more buttons, rename buttons, we can move the button, we can delete buttons, and we can rename or delete the remote. It's truly a magical feeling when your TV turns on using your flipper for the first time. You can repeat this process for all your infrared devices to create the ultimate universal remote. Okay, now you have a fully updated Flipper Zero on the official firmware. You can already start playing with sub gigahertz signals, infrared, and other built-in tools. But if you truly want to see what this device is capable of, you'll want to flash some custom firmware. Think of the official firmware as the standard operating system and custom firmware as a specialized, high-performance version built by the community. It's the single best way to unlock the hardware's full potential. Now, there are several great options like Unleashed, but a fantastic and popular choice in late 2025 is the Momentum firmware. Now, what makes firmware like Momentum so popular is that it not only adds new features, but also preloads a massive library of the best community plugins and apps, saving you a ton of setup time. It's known for being stable while adding a ton of powerful features and a slicker interface right out of the box. This includes things like customizable animations and themes that let you truly personalize your device's look and feel. And installing it is incredibly easy. Make sure QFlipper is closed. Go to momentum-fw.dev, click the install, then click web updater. Make sure your flipper is connected. Change the channel to mainline and then click install. And just like we did on QFlipper, as soon as you click it, the updater will send the firmware to your flipper. Your flipper will reboot with its popular new software. You'll immediately notice new apps and menus available to you that weren't there before, giving you access to more advanced tools and protocols. 
And just like that, you've gone from a brand new flipper to creating your first universal remote. You now have a stable, more powerful, and incredibly capable device in your hands ready for you to explore. Now, if this guide helped you out, do me a favor and hit that like button and subscribe for more Flipper Zero and Flipper One tutorials. For my question of the day, what feature are you most excited to try now that you're set up? Let me know down in the comments. You've got the basics down. Now the real fun begins. Start exploring the sub gigahertz menu to see all the invisible signals around you. Now that you've used the infrared menu, see what other devices you can control. The possibilities are massive. Stay curious, be ethical, and I'll see you in the next one. I'm Jay Blanked. Thanks for watching. Peace.